now we're moving a little further in history. The state of Israel is about to emerge and events are warming up in, in, in Syria and Aleppo. What happened to the Codex during the anti-Jewish riots in Aleppo of 1947? Right. So, so the, as we know, the Syrian government uh, encouraged riots against the Jews, not that the population needed a lot of encouragement. And the riots were, uh, took the form of burning down the great synagogue. There were many Jews beaten. There were many Jews, there were many of the uh, rapes and uh, some people died during this. And it was uh, horrific. So knowing that the Codex, this most treasured piece, uh, piece of uh, Jewish history was in the, a lot of the Syrian Jews took great pains to try and save it from the, from the fire. So it was saved. Uh, we think it was Murad and Sarina Faham. We're not exactly sure that many Syrian Jews claim to have been the ones to save it, whether it was the Gabai. Whether it, it was probably a group effort. And it was taken out of the shul. It looks like, it appears that what we have of it is, I think, about 60% in the form that we have now. But but uh, people took pages of it. People took a uh, hid page. It doesn't seem to have been burnt. It used to be believed that it got that a lot of it got burnt. Um, however, uh, on investigation, um, I think one of the scholars uh, at the um, in Israel, when it eventually got there, found that what was thought to be burn marks was actually a fungus that had an infested the, uh, the the. So so basically, what happened at this point was that. Um, Yitzhak ben Svi, who was the second president of the state of Israel, was also a historian. Now there was a unit, um, there was a unit in the Israeli intelligence called Unit Five Hundred Four, Intelligence Unit Five Hundred Four, and they were responsible for intelligence activities amongst Jewish communities in the diaspora, which is a bit of a weird thing, you know weird job but that was their that was their 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 role that they were the people by the way who were able to obtain a lot of the dead sea scrolls um so uh sami nachmias and uh uh, shmuel goren who was the commander of this of the military intelligence fighter before so yitzhak ben svi knew about the aleppo codex and he knew that the syrian jews had hit it um after these riots and he tasked the Mossad, Mossad's interesting. It's like, it's a, here you have an intelligence unit, but they do things that are a little weird. They're looking for a kidnapped kid in the case of Yosela. They'll hunt down Nazis. Uh, they'll take, you know, revenge against the Munich uh, terrorists, etc. You know, it's not a, it just intelligence gathering. And one of the things that they were tasked with doing was getting the Aleppo Codex back. So um, an, a, a number of Syrian Jews helped the Mossad um, and um, so someone by the name of Rafi Sutton, who Sutton is a very famous Syrian Jewish name, and a number of the Syrian Jews helped. It was eventually smuggled out of Syria, I, I think via Iran, uh, which at the time was under the Shah, um, from Iran to Turkey and then Turkey eventually to Israel, where unfortunately initially was not treated well. It was uh, placed in a filing cabinet. I mean, I don't know, is this because of Israeli bureaucracy? Or I have no idea. But it ends up in a filing cabinet. Eventually, it was moved to what they call the Yad Ben Svi. And um, it was, uh, they started to really uh, do a lot of preservation. There was, there's a Michael Magen, who is the head of the paper conservation lab at the Israel Museum. And he did uh, a lot of preservation work on the Codex. Uh, but we also, because a lot of it was missing, we had to resort to other ways to to figure out the missing stuff. So first of all, over the course, since the 1950s, when it was taken to Israel, until now, pages have cropped up. Syrian Jews have found pages mm-hmm. here and there that, and, and given it to, to Israel, uh, to the Yad Ben Svi, and to the Israel, now it's in the Israel Museum, Shrine of the Book. And so more and more of it has got together. But we have some other important sources. First of all, there are the notes of, of Umberto Casuto, who did examine it. 
And there's a fascinating story. There was a Rav Sholem Shachna Yellen in the ninth, late 19th century, who was a soifer, a scribe from Vilna, and uh, not Vilna, but from Lithuania. And he wanted to, you know, one of his life's goals was to make Aliyah. And also he wanted to see the, the uh, Aleppo Codex. So he did get to make Aliyah, but he became ill and he could not go to Aleppo to see it. Isn't the, so he sent his son-in-law and his son-in-law took his father-in-law's Tanakh and went there and took notes on the entire Tanakh of the Aleppo Codex, the Masora, the, 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 the various spellings, word, word changes, uh, different, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That, that actually got lost. That Tanakh was lost until sometime in the, I think it was the 70s. So Roshon Sahia had lived in Kiryat Moshe. I used to live there. And, um, and uh, they were demolishing an apartment building in which he lived. And they, were, they, they found a boydom. It's like a sealed, uh, in Israeli apartments, you have a space sometimes between the, 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 the ceiling and the roof. And you can use that to store things in. Um, uh, so anyway, they found the Tanakh. And that was given to Yad Yitzhak Ben Svi. And so we had sources of that sort throughout history. There were also questions that were sent to the people in Aleppo. Uh, someone, I forgot who it was, sent a list of questions about different spellings and words. And they would, uh, they would be able to answer yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. So all these sources, you know, came together and were used in uh, actually the Hebrew University based on the Aleppo Codex and some of these other sources produce what they call Keter Yerushalayim, which is a wonderful Tanakh that is based primarily on the Aleppo Codex, but also uses the notes of Rav Shon Shachna Yellen and used some of the work of Kasuto and other sources to put together this uh, uh, reconstruction of that, uh, of that original uh, Codex.